Generation War, or Unsere Mütter, Unsere Väter as it is known in Germany, is a tough miniseries to love. The production is absolutely stellar, especially considering this isn't your usual HBO, Netflix or otherwise big budget production. Though it was the most expensive television production ever made in Germany until very recently, its 14 million euro budget pales in comparison to series that strive to depict the same or similar conflicts of a similar scale. In three episodes of about one and a half hour each, the story of five Berlin friends during the Second World War is told. The war against the Soviet Union and Operation Barbarossa is about to begin, but the friends are in high spirits due to the Third Reich's optimistic forecast in the summer of 1941 and expect to be back before Christmas that same year. Two of them, the brothers Wilhelm and Friedhelm, leave as Wehrmacht soldiers to the Eastern Front. Charlotte, or Charlie as she is referred to by her friends, will also travel to Russia as a nurse in a field hospital. The fourth of the group of friends, Greta, stays in Germany. She aspires a singing career, and has a relationship with the fifth main character, Victor. Victor is Jewish, and has recently seen his dreams of becoming a fashion designer literally go up in smoke when his father's clothing store was destroyed during the infamous Kristallnacht. During the series, the viewer follows the development surrounding the five friends until the end of the war, four years later. For a long time, the general perception of World War II was that the Germans were collectively guilty of the Holocaust. This is an image that has begun to change in more recent years. The five friends in the series are more victims of the time they live in and the place where they were born. It's an approach that fits the modern view of the Second World War. The border between victims and perpetrators, right and wrong, black and white, according to some, is no longer clear. Naturally, beware of spoilers in this video, so if you do plan on seeing Generation War, which I do highly recommend, then go and watch it first and then come back to this video once you've done so. It's both well worth watching as well as analyzing, so let's dive right into it. Now, from a purely cinematographic point of view, Generation War is absolutely superb. It has a great narrative with surprisingly relatable and even likable characters. Something you wouldn't expect in the time and setting the series takes place in. This is in no small part thanks to the outstanding performances of its cast. The two brothers, depicted by Volker Bruch and Tom Schilling, each give a convincing performance of two German soldiers who each walk their own path but each in their own way become disillusioned with the war. And Miriam Stein as Charlotte was simply charming to behold in her own way. The character arcs each take their own unique twists and keep you intrigued until the very end to see where their road of suffering will end. The scenes too are well shot and even the action is caught in a fairly gritty and realistic manner. It's not without reason that some critics have dubbed it the German Band of Brothers, even if Generation War definitely focuses even more on the drama than on the action. And as a drama, it does its job very well. The series was very well viewed and received as a result, but it wasn't without its controversies. Some have rightly pointed out historical discrepancies that are an undeniable smear on the cinematographic achievements of the series. This is where the series begins to fall short of a masterpiece to me. It was high time that the German perspective of the Second World War was put to light as well and there's a lot of things to be learned in that regard, but the series does not dare to go that extra mile to face the true reality of the war that it strives to depict. What is particularly striking is that the Nazi ideology is hardly present in the series. Among the five main characters, there's no convincing Nazi, which is logical if one of them is Jewish. However, Nazi Germany is an entirely different world from the group of friends because of this. The series never offers any insights as to what the group of friends thinks in regards to National Socialism, its leaders, or how they are influenced by it. This is not entirely credible, and the possibility to address really difficult issues did not seem to appeal to the creators. At best, we have rather stereotypical characters representing the real Nazis when they appear on screen, such as the cold and sensitive Gestapo officer and the brutal and truthless SS officer. There's no doubt that these are the real perpetrators and fanatics, who act and murder out of conviction and are of a darker shade than all the rest. As a result, the war in Generation War is primarily a soldier's war. We barely get to see anything about life in Germany under the Nazi regime. In addition, the series somewhat ignores the fact that World War II was a war that has caused untold civilian casualties on both sides. 
Although there are undisputed execution of civilians or partisans by the army and raids, none of these are the mass killings that have been done among the population of, for example, Poland, the Baltic State, Ukraine and Belarus. The focus primarily remains on the soldiers and the death and suffering that the characters witness on the front lines. It's a missed opportunity, because the series scarcely shows anything about the actual life in Nazi Germany. Kreta is our only window into this life, and it's an incomplete picture due to her fame as a singer as a result of her patronage by a Gestapo officer, but also because the reason her story turned south, being defeatism, was not as heavily punished as portrayed in the series. While there were certainly regular German citizens who were direct victims of the regime as shown in the series, they were the exception and not the rule. It's little things like these that ensure the series falls just short of a masterpiece. It was high time that the German perspective of the Second World War was put to light and there's a lot of things to be learned in that regard, but the series does not dare to go that extra mile to face the true reality of the war. One of the main controversies surrounding Generation War was about the way that Polish partisans are portrayed in the series. They are portrayed as being at least as anti-Semitic as the Nazis. Better yet, actively outspoken anti-Semitism primarily comes to pass during our time with the Polish resistance, the Polish underground army, more so than during the times that we actually have a look at Berlin or the German army. Particularly in Poland, there was, understandably, some discontent regarding the way that the Polish resistance was being portrayed here, as the Polish resistance was known to be a safe haven for many Jews during World War II. The honorific of Israel handed out to non-Jews who risked their lives to save Jews during World War II, the Righteous Among Nations honorific, was handed out to more Polish people than any other nationality. There is a side note to be made here, however. It is worth mentioning that the Polish underground army had a complex relationship in regards to Jews, as the stance of Polish partisans varied from unit to unit. While some welcomed Jewish SKPs into their ranks, others varied in their extremity in terms of anti-Semitism. There certainly was a degree of anti-Semitism present in Poland, just as there has been a history of deeply rooted anti-Semitism throughout some of the populace in the rest of Europe well before the Second World War. Even so, it's undeniable that the choice to make the Polish voices the most anti-Semitic in a miniseries about life in Nazi Germany is a fairly problematic one. If nothing else, the miniseries at the very least captures the constant uncertainty of Jews who escaped the Holocaust and how dependent they were on the good graces of the local populace. But all in all, it does seem to take the attention away from the crimes or acts of Germans that the series should be focusing on instead. A discrepancy with an even bigger impact on the series, however, is Friedhelm's character. Out of the five main characters, Friedhelm is arguably the most interesting due to him, in a sense, being the very personification of some very important questions. Questions that have been asked for decades and have proven to be very difficult to answer. Questions such as, how could it be that ordinary Germans became mass murderers? How could it be that Germany, the land of great poets, writers, composers and thinkers, was capable of committing such acts? And how could even the likes of intellectuals, doctors and scholars join the Nazis and be responsible for the atrocities we have all come to know of? Friedhelm, the sensitive boy who takes his poetry bundles to Russia, who refuses to fight, abhors the war and is shocked by the violence, makes that turn around himself and becomes the very kind of German soldier we have all come to know all too well in every other movie and series. But why? What is his motivation? This, unfortunately, is never really made clear. His change just happens, as there is a pretty big and important gap in the timeline that omits the event at Stalingrad and jumps straight to the German withdrawal and the Battle of Kursk. I see this transformation of a sensitive, well-educated boy to a ruthless killer as a crucial representation of the moral downfall of Germany. In a series that strives to initiate a dialogue between generations, this could have been an important question to answer. Perhaps this is simply a limitation of the medium of television, as deeper feelings and thought patterns are difficult to capture on film. I can certainly see what the makers try to do here, as Freetown's character arc is very reminiscent of the real-life story depicted in Willy Peter Reiser's book A Stranger to Myself, in which he, also an aspiring and skeptical poet, finds himself swept away by the Nazi regime during his service in the German army and ends up committing war crimes and inhuman acts at the Eastern Front himself. 
It's definitely a book I can recommend if it's something you'd like to learn more about, as it details some of the thought processes that sadly haven't been captured as well on screen here in Generation War. Having said all of that, it is worth noting that certain atrocities and war crimes certainly are being committed and shown on screen. Not only the SS, but also the regular German troops are shown executing soldiers, civilians and aiding in the rounding up of Jews, although it's the Ukrainian collaborators who carry out the actual executions. Though not untrue, it once again saves our main characters from the worst that the war has to offer. In fact, they express their utter shock at the execution of a Jew in front of them, which is rightly something that some critics choose to question. This reaction does, after all, imply that the regular German soldiers had no knowledge of the executions of Jews that happened on a massive scale altogether. Now, there are varying opinions in regards to the degree in which the German army, and the German people for that matter, knew about the persecutions of the Jews. It's a massive discussion that would deserve a video of its own, but there is considerable evidence to believe that at least a part of the Wehrmacht participated directly in the slaughtering of Jews during the invasion of Russia. Though the Einsatzgruppen, the death squads of the SS, usually carried out the killings, the Wehrmacht was critical in making it happen. If not through executions, then at the very least through rounding up the victims. The approach of the series is, in a way, understandable. It makes sense that our main characters cannot share in the usual Nazi beliefs for the sake of remaining relatable and likable for the audience. In fact, the miniseries does not have to depict every German as some kind of evil monster, because they weren't. Though it is still difficult for some people to come to terms with, the Germans and even Nazis were still human beings. It's easy to forget this with their depiction as faceless antagonists in a great many movies, series, video games and so on, but Generation War does at the very least show us a truer picture in the sense that these were still human beings, rational or otherwise, who were caught in the circumstances of their time and got swept away by them. Each of the main characters present in Generation War do show this much. Perhaps that is the series' greatest achievement. It may not be entirely historically responsible in its depiction of the Third Reich, but it did not shy away from emotional depth, certain objectivity, and a confrontational truth. Victims and perpetrators had no borders in the Second World War, and war is not as black and white as many other popular media tend to show, but it's a dirty and messy canvas of many different shades of grey. Yes, the creators played it relatively safe in their depiction of the main characters and the circumstances surrounding them, and yes, we may not get a deep glimpse at the motivations and political beliefs of these characters whereas this could have offered even greater insights, but they offer a blank enough canvas to allow us, the viewer, the chance to imagine just what it might have felt like to be in their shoes in the Germany of 1941. A viewpoint that could be more important to imagine than many might think if we truly want to remember every aspect of the Second World War and create a dialogue between the generations 